So far in our course, we've almost exclusively studied parametric statistical models, and the one exception to that being early on in the semester, we looked at uh, the non-parametric version of the bootstrap. But since then, our study of regression and our study of generalized linear models, those have been parametric models. And at this point, we're going to make a turn to studying non-parametric regression models. And so we'll introduce the concept of a non-parametric regression model in this unit. We'll contrast this notion with the parametric models that we've studied so far. And then we'll move on to studying uh, a few important non-parametric regression models, one being kernel estimators and another being splines. And then finally, we'll introduce uh, additive models and uh, generalized additive models and we could think about some of those generalized additive models as a blending between parametric and non-parametric models. So let's start with uh, an introduction to non-parametric regression modeling and you know the, f the first video here is really just to compare and contrast non-parametric regression modeling with parametric modeling. And so far, uh, everything that we've looked at has been parametric, and I want to zero in on just exactly what that means. So a statistical model is parametric if it is a family of probability distributions with a finite set of parameters. So think of an example. Uh, the normal linear regression model is a parametric model because it follows the following form. Right, the response, here the y vector, is normally distributed and it has a mean and the mean depends on some number of parameters, typically we've called it p plus 1 where p is the number of predictors. So that's our mean, it's a function of the predictors and of the parameters and then it has a variance covariance matrix this um, here is a parameter so this is a single parameter the mean has p plus one parameters and so overall we have uh, p plus 2 parameters to estimate in this model. And so this model, uh, this very compact form of our uh, normal linear regression model, has a finite number of parameters, in particular p plus 2. So the generalized linear models that we've just studied, the Poisson and the binomial, are also examples of parametric models because we specified the form of the model, for example, a binomial response with a linear predictor and a logit link function, and that form had finitely many parameters. So we might contrast that with what we call a non-parametric model, and a non-parametric model is a family of probability distributions with infinitely many parameters. So that might sound a bit scary, but let's think about what that might mean in terms of an example. So suppose that we have uh, something that looks similar to the last slide, we have a response and it has a normal distribution with some mean, now I'm just calling it f of x1 and some variance covariance matrix. But let's suppose that this function is uh, an arbitrary function And it's an arbitrary function where x1 just lives on the interval, say, negative 1 to 1. So this could be any function that has a domain from negative 1 to 1. And since, since this function is arbitrary on this interval, no finite set of parameters could specify its form. And so we would need you know, an infinite number of parameters to specify exactly what this function would be. And the typical situation in statistical modeling is that you know, there's something that we don't know and that we're trying to estimate. And so if we really don't know the functional form at all, 
and we're trying to estimate it, we would need infinite data, right? And that's just not what we have. So this is an example of a non-parametric model. So another way to think about that is, you know, generally we can think about statistical modeling as trying to model the mean of the response in the following way. So we have some mean, it's equal to the expected value of our response, and that's equal to some uh, function of our predictors. And in normal linear regression, that function is a linear function, right? It's a linear combination of predictors and parameters. And in a generalized linear model, we relaxed the second assumption and we allowed the response to come from the exponential family. And often this changed the form of f. So for example, we saw that for Poisson regression, our f turned into uh, e raised to the linear predictor. In non-parametric regression, um, we, instead of choosing f beforehand and then trying to estimate the parameters that show up in f, we will really try to learn f. So we're trying to be much more uh, flexible in, in what f is. So we'll, we'll talk about what it means to learn f in uh, a future lesson. But here I just want to think about, um, you know, very generally what this might mean. So we learn f by assuming that it comes from some smooth family of functions. So we're already putting some restrictions on f by assuming that it's smooth, right? It has uh, many higher order derivatives. So we're not choosing, you know, functions that are, are you know, spiky in certain ways. And, you know, the set of potential fits to the data is much larger than in the parametric approach, right? In the parametric approach, we might, for this plot here, um, choose a line. That would be a pretty bad choice. But we've fi if that were the case, we were just using normal linear regression, we would fix a line and then fit the line. And then we would realize pretty quickly if we did some diagnostics that that fit would be bad. And then maybe we'd have to add some higher order terms like uh, squared or cubic terms. And that might do reasonably well, it might not for this particular data. But notice that we are fixing the form of the function beforehand and then trying out and seeing if it works. And then changing the form, trying it out, seeing if it works. Now that might not be super efficient. What might be more efficient in this case, if you didn't know how the data were generated, would be to try to leave open or pretty widely open the class of functions that might fit this data and try to learn uh, a particular function like the curve that I've fit here, uh, try to learn that from the data. So try to pick up on the curvature that exists there. And that's ultimately what a non-parametric model will do. In the next lesson, we'll figure out you know, in what sense we can do that, what are the different options. But before we do that, let's just think about a few advantages and disadvantages of non-parametric regression. So for advantages, the non-parametric approach is more flexible. So when modeling new data, if you have little past information, you're not really sure what the, you know, the law-like relationship is, if there's any. You don't know that it's linear. Uh, the non-parametric approach might be more efficient, right? It might help you learn that relationship. Um, the non-parametric approach assumes far less about the form of the model, and so it's less liable to make major mistakes that result in bias. And the parametric approach, on the other hand, can result in bias if we choose the wrong form of the model. So we've seen this uh, a bit, but suppose that your data are actually uh, quadratic, and you choose to fit a line to that data, you will have bias in your model. And so that would be problematic. And of course, in higher dimensions, it's much harder to know whether your, uh, your data were generated by some complicated nonlinear relationship. If you just fit a line, you have bias. If you use a non-parametric approach and you, know, you do it 
correctly, uh, you could cut down on the amount of bias because you're learning about some of the structure there and you're not just assuming that it's, for example, linear. All right, well, those sound like really promising features of a non-parametric model, and we'll see how some of those play out soon. Of course, there are disadvantages. Uh, so one is that, well, the parametric approach is more efficient if the chosen model form is correct. So if you know something about the model form, if you know that it's linear or you know what the, the curve structure is, then it's probably better to use the parametric approach. Um, the the non-parametric approach will be less efficient when the structure is available. And another disadvantage of the uh, non-parametric approach is that it's more difficult to interpret. So remember we've spent a decent amount of time this semester thinking about um, easy interpretation of parameters for parametric models. So the, the linear model, the Poisson regression model, the uh, binomial model, all of those had nice interpretations for parameters. And that has consequences, right? It has consequences for coming up with explanations as to why changes in your predictors would um, result in changes in your response. It has ethical implications. Um, often, you know, if you, if you don't have a good reason why um, predictors and responses are related, if you can't explain it, you might use it to make predictions, but those predictions could be unjust, and that's problematic. And with non-parametric models, we don't really have a formulaic way of describing the relationship between the predictors and the response. And often graphical approaches will be necessary, but we know that graphics can be different with high dimensional data, and so that becomes problematic. And we'll see in a later video that uh, a generalized additive model might be a nice balance between a parametric approach and a non-parametric approach, because uh, sometimes generalized additive models are called semi-parametric in certain forms because they can allow for some interpretation of um, parameters and not interpretations of others. And so we'll, we'll describe generalized additive models in more detail, but for right now I just want us to think, well, one disadvantage of the non-parametric approach is potential difficulties in interpreting the model.